Hello guys and welcome back. You are watching the Camera 64 podcast and as always I am your host Alfonso Chavez coming to you from Converse, Texas. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat here real quick. So today guys I just wanted to flip through a couple of pictures that I uh, had the opportunity to go out and shoot at one of my favorite spots in San Antonio which happens to be the Pearl Brewery which is just north of downtown San Antonio and uh i'm out shooting my trusty old uh canon 1d mark III with a uh, sigma 35 millimeter lens uh, which is one of my favorite lenses it's kind of fairly new to me i've had it now for maybe uh, about seven months or eight months along those lines and uh, it has been a little bit of a learning curve using it it's kind of one of those lenses where you uh you're a little on the wide end, <clears throat> but not quite wide enough to uh, take in a whole bunch. Uh, but it is definitely something that you have to think about. Uh, also, other things to consider is the fact that if you are coming from a uh, zoom lens, uh, you kind of got a lot of uh, latitude or longitude, or I don't know the correct wording for that, but you have a lot of area to work with as far as uh, trying to compose a picture whether it's zooming in or backing up uh, but when you have a prime lens like this 35 it's a lot more work in my opinion but I think that the work is well worth it as you'll see by these pictures here um, so let's go ahead and flip through them right quick here by bringing this up so this first one is the old can itself and the can itself as you can tell is kind of getting to be a little muddy and dirty up there but it is uh, very sharp here, as you can tell, for being such an old camera. It's just amazing to me that uh, I can still get these beautiful pictures out of it. But definitely needs to be redone. Maybe I should send them a letter. I'm really good at, st at stuff like that, writing letters to companies and letting them know how I feel. So maybe I just might do that. Here's the uh, Pearl parking sign just outside. Nothing fancy here. So this is the, the main entrance here. And if you come down, <coughs> there's actually a uh, little arc that goes over the top here. And that's usually where I have, if I'm shooting here with clients, this is where I'll have them uh, meet me, which is right under these arches. Or if you go through, you'll see the cured. So one of the things I want to mention right off the bat is that, not this, up here, I don't know what that is or how that got up there, but there's a lot of dead shrubbery. Um, it's just not looking so great right now. They have been working really hard to replace some of this stuff, as you can tell right here. And uh, while I was out there, there were actually crews out there working on it. Uh, but yeah, that's the entrance to the uh, Pearl right there. So this is the old stable house where they used to house all the horses. Uh, in case you were uh, wondering what that was, a lot of people don't realize what that is. But that's what it is. It's a round building. It, it, it's just a huge round circle and it's got entrances uh several entrances around the outside but if you go inside it used to be an old stable where they would house all the horses they would pull the trailers around the brewery so this is just a water tank that was outside and i just kind of like that green against that kind of blue color so i said well let me go up and take a shot of that and again this lens is super sharp uh and again, this is only a 10 megapixel camera, but look at all the detail in that. That's just crazy. That's why I don't invest often in new, new cameras. Uh, and also they have a fueling station. Obviously, everybody knows what a fueling station was used for. But they had their own little fueling spot, and this is where it's at. They got the, the fuel tank still up there. So one of the things I really like about this lens is, for whatever reason... Canon cameras always have had this issue with red. Uh, it oversaturates it a little bit. And now this has been slightly edited. Uh, so it's not going to represent exactly the way it came out of the camera. But uh, the red seems kind of muted with this lens. I don't know why that is. Uh, so I actually had to add some more in to make this kind of pop out here a little bit. But it looks really good. I can appreciate that because it, Canon cameras do often have a little bit more red in their pictures this is just a wide angle view and you can tell by this stack here that i actually corrected for the pin cushion i'm sorry for the barrel distortion 
But when, what happens is when you correct for that barrel distortion, you're going to kind of get a weird curve going back the opposite way. And you can see it here on the buildings too. But, you know, most people are not going to notice that unless you're a photographer like myself. That's the only way you'll really, really catch on to stuff like that. I'll see it every single time. So here, here it is. Uh, same shot. I just turned my camera up on its end and took a uh, portrait style shot out, out of it and it's a little bit straighter here just because it's not on the edge so it looks pretty nice i just wish we, we would have had blue skies for me out here running around so this is one of my favorite buildings to shoot around because this i've used this entrance right here uh several times because it's got this green behind it and makes for an awesome shot and also this sign over here too and uh, also I've used these stairs and actually been at the top and I think the next picture or two are going to be of this spot up here. But this building right here in particular I really like enjoy shooting around and on the opposite side you also have the big pearl sign too which is beautiful. And this is the inside part right here. So here I am this, this uh, spot here is about 10 feet off the ground but if you shoot up at it it actually looks pretty cool. If somebody was standing here it would look really nice. I really like using that. I've used, utilized it m many times. So this right here, th this is just a uh, branch that was right there in that same building. And I just noticed this spine right here. Look at that. Holy moly. That would really get you there if you had that. But the, again, there's a bunch of dead stuff. And I just had to come in here. Gosh, look at the detail on that, guys. So whoever says 10 megapixels is not enough. My gosh. One of the reasons why I really like still using 10 megapixel cameras, in particular this particular one, and I also own a 40D that I will pull out on occasion too, is these pictures will load super fast on my computer. They download fast from the card and they also upload really fast and they're really easy to work with uh, in any one of the programs. And this is just a little cactus there that they have planted. Right next to it is a, was it's like a, I don't know, it's a cactus as well, but it's about maybe... I don't know four feet tall three feet tall but it's kind of a big this is like a really really small miniature one you can tell by the rocks how small this cactus is uh, but it doesn't look like this larger one made it just like the one behind it just like it didn't make it from through that freeze uh, so right across from there you're gonna see uh, they have these solar panels set up and I was trying my best to get this lined up to where everything just kind of lined up and I I actually had to do this in post because I, I was trying to get it correct in camera, but gosh, it was so hard. I took this picture maybe six or seven times, and uh, this one was the best one. But you can tell that this is not centered. So much for trying to get it centered right. This is not centered at the bottom, and also it's not coming out the best. And this is even working with it afterwards. I still couldn't get it just right, but it's still kind of a cool picture. I like it. So right here, this is this is also not too far down from there. They had some working areas of the old factory, and this is, I guess, one of the panels that was there. So uh, it's got lots of cool gauges on it, which I really like, and it also tells the date of when this was installed, which is cool, 1963. So I'm going to run through these a little bit faster here. Again, the detail is just uh, just amazing that you can still get detail like this. I mean, look at this shot right here. I really like this shot. Because I think, uh, let me see. I'm just curious now. What was I shooting at? Was I, I was at F2. Yeah, I was at F2. Uh, 80th of a second. And, and, the, and the cool thing is, is that the distance from this, from these wires that are right over the top of this gauge here, I, I would imagine we're like maybe a quarter of an inch off of where I was focused at and it's still out of focus that's just crazy to me but you know hey at f2 and this is a 1.4 lens guys just so that you're aware it's beautiful absolutely beautiful so this is the I guess the company that designed this and put it up and they're from Buffalo New York obviously the brewery company 1963 these gauges are really nice too look at that holy moly 
So the so uh, the other thing too that you'll catch a lot of, and this is why I don't like to watch a whole bunch of YouTube videos. I hope you're watching mine, but don't watch a bunch of them because they they just like to bash into old cameras. But look at the. This is super bright out here, guys. I mean, this is outdoors. Even with the clouds, this is still pretty bright compared to inside. Now, this has got some adjustment to it, obviously, so that we can see into this area. But it's not like super muddy or anything. I mean, it's still got great detail, even for the this camera not having s so much dynamic range, you know, like a new camera. This camera now is, gosh, almost 14 years old. It was released in 2000 seven i believe yeah because this see this camera for me when i saw this this camera is fairly i mean to be honest with you it's fairly new uh it, it had under a thousand shots on it uh so i couldn't pass it up right i went ahead and bought it i think i paid eight hundred dollars for it but for me it was a big deal because when i first started it and actually i started in 2007 this is the camera that I lusted over and I really wanted this camera, but at the time $6,000 was just crazy ridiculous, right? I couldn't afford that. I mean, I still, I mean, I could afford it now, but I don't know if I really want to afford it because, you know, why, why would I want to afford a new camera? If look at this old camera is still again, right here. Look, I'm focused right here. Uh, and I am at 2.8. I actually opened it up a little bit. I'm at 2.8 here. I mean, I'm sorry, I shut it down to 2.8, and look at this. Isn't this crazy? This this is actually, uh, it's down a little down ways, down the ways here, and it's, it's an entrance to a restaurant, but if you look straight up, this is like a, hanging like a chandelier, and it's got these little, uh, I don't know what the, these are. These are kind of like belts hanging off of it. Makes for like a really cool hanging centerpiece, but I'm shooting straight up at it. And this makes for a really nice picture. I really like the detail in this. I'll, although I wish, instead of focusing here, I wish I would have focused on this. I think it would have been a home, a lot better picture. But hey, it's still a nice picture. I like it. And this was the door, the entrance to that. Now this, I definitely am going to use uh, in uh, something else. Because this, this will really look good if you uh, screened it. Uh, use the uh, filter mode as a screen this would look really nice on another picture over the top and of course this is the the Elon I think it is yeah the Elon Hotel <coughs> which is uh, actually what makes the pro possible I think they pay a huge bill because they are one of the best hotels in the in the in not only in San Antonio not even the United States but actually the entire world they're ranked up if you don't believe me look it up it's pretty pretty awesome pretty cool and uh it, and if you're familiar with uh that hotel right in front of it there's two i'm assuming that they were water tanks at one time but again i'm just shooting straight up at it it's got these sprayers and i guess the tank you can kind of see that that part you're seeing here is this is the top of the tank and i'm just shooting up into it i would actually like to get in there that would be cool and then, uh, of course, th these are this is what's coming down from those two tanks. So I focused on these handles right here. Again, nice. It looks like they've been painted several times because it's got different colors. It looks like it was green and then red and some God knows what other color, but it looks pretty cool. And then these are the old pipes. This is what my pipes looked at my house after the big freeze. I had to change all this stuff right here. It was a mess at my house, guys. I ended up, you know... With that winter freeze, I ended up having to repair six different pipes uh, in total along with some of the junctions. And then I also had to, uh, I ended up finding another problem that I didn't even know that I had because I hadn't been down there to check on anything. But since I was down there, I ended up finding out that my uh, pipe that runs out of my house actually had a crack in it too. So I had to dig that out. And that was really fun, right? So this is the parking garage and you can see all this dead stuff. They got a lot of work still to do. The trees are dead. All the all this hanging which is normally nice bright and green like this right here. You can see they're just they're going to have to cut all this out, all these shrubs. They got a lot of work, but I, you know, I'm pretty confident that they're going to have this place looking pretty good in a month or so. Again here, this actually <laughs> I should have put a 
a bluish tint on it and this would have looked really nice i think but this window just really caught my attention and it's funny because all this brown right here is normally all green and this green against this red looks really nice and i've actually <laughs> believe it or not it's a restroom but i have used this several times for different uh things for wedding dresses and quinces because it looks really nice uh, if you got a little bit of imagination you can picture a, a lady with a white dress in front of this it, it would actually look pretty nice i think so anyway so this this is a new uh brarista bra brasseria or manchocho it's some kind of restaurant it looks really snazzy it looks like something out of the 20s or 30s this is new this wasn't there uh so it, it's pretty cool actually i really like these doors even though they're new they look kind of aged it just kind of sets itself look at see you could see the old tile the old bar it's just really nice i gotta take my wife there maybe we gotta check that out see what it looks like So this is another shot right here. This is the, there's actually a little, it used to be, I guess, the firehouse for the, uh, for the factory. And then there's a restaurant that's right in here, which actually has some pretty good foods. But I've used this also several times. And the light was kind of hidden in a weird way. I don't know if you can tell, because it normally does not look like this. I guess the clouds had a small break and was, was letting a little bit of light fall on this tower right here. And it looked really cool, so that's why I stopped and took stopped and took a picture of it. Because I've got tons of pictures of this already, but it just looked different, and I really like the way this looks. It came out nice. So this is one of the one of the plants that I'm I'm assuming made it through. And I all I did was I took a overhead shot down at, down at this, and it looks pretty cool. I like it. And this is my last picture. This was actually. It's funny because I had this picture in mind and I, I just stopped and this was the first picture I took and it wasn't quite centered the way I like it as you can see on the right hand side oops you can see on the right hand side I'm not in in the frame here like I am here and I try to do that again I took like maybe five or six I wasn't looking through the viewfinder as you can tell I'm just holding the camera in front of me uh, so I'm actually shooting through a, a glass to the mirror and then I'm, I'm i get a reflection back which comes across my eyes it looks pretty cool i i kind of like it i wish i this could bring this down to my head that would look kind of cool too but anyway it's a great uh example of just kind of being creative thinking off the wind here a little bit and i ended up with that so i so this is a spring break for me and uh, i didn't have anything planned out because i wasn't sure what was going to be going on as many of you know that here in Texas, they got the mask mandate coming off. And so it's going to be a little bit crazy. And so I didn't want to plan anything. I didn't want to uh, do anything, I guess, to kind of offend anybody. So I just decided to go ahead and hold off and see how everything is looking. Plus, my wife is out of town this week and my sons are working and I'm here at home and I don't have much to do. So. Uh, I did manage to get out and do a shoot, but I was out here was going to meet somebody, but uh, they they ended up having to cancel. So I just went ahead and took ran out and took some of these pictures, which I had a great time doing it. Uh, I always do like using this old camera and I always like mentioning that because I want you to know that even though you may not have a brand new camera, you may not have a lens that is quite as nice as this one. This particular lens is you can still get some great photography if you take the time and learn uh all the basics because that's essentially what it's all about if you know the basics you're going to end up with good pictures no matter what camera you have and uh trust me over the years i've learned that i i uh used to put a lot of money into my gear and, and then uh as i got better at it i noticed that the gear didn't matter as much it was more uh the gear that was between my ears which happens to be my brain uh so just apply yourself more to your brain. If you're going to invest in, in, if you feel the need that you have to invest, I would definitely suggest investing more in your glass. Uh, getting better lenses will definitely always uh, improve your photography. And that still, still comes second to my best advice, which is just learning the basics and understanding it. That's first and foremost. Uh, I would much rather have somebody spend money on that 
Uh, and then next in line would be glass or buying new lenses. And then last but not least, your camera can be just as old as my camera right there is 14 years old. You can still get amazing shots even at 10 megapixels, guys. So I'm going to wrap up with this picture. And uh, I hope you're having an awesome day. Um, if you find that you're in the need for, uh, f for pictures of any kind, we also shoot video. Uh, we are available for senior sessions. Uh, we can also do your wedding or handle your quinceañeras as well. Uh, also, I do not mind having people join me. So if you're a photographer and you would like to join me on one of my sessions, feel free. You can come and pick my brain all you want. I really enjoy that a lot. Uh, and I enjoy helping other people uh, enjoy photography as much as they can. And part of that is getting better. So with that, guys, I want to ask you if you enjoy this kind of video, uh, if you would subscribe to our channel uh, here on YouTube, we would greatly appreciate it. So just hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button, so that that way every time you hear uh, or, or see one of our new videos come out, it'll let you know that there is something new for you to go check out. So till next time, guys, this has been your host, Alfonso Chavez, and this has been the Camera 64 Podcast, and we look forward to uh, seeing you next time. Till then, you take care and keep shooting, guys. Bye-bye.